Everybody's good with their pens? And remember, we left off with CSI Thomas? Yes, Your Honor. And State, are you ready? Yes, Judge. You may proceed. Thank you. Okay, CSI Thomas. Yes, ma'am. The last place we left off is we were discussing the, um, the last thing that I showed you was the gun that was found at Stanchion 7, which belonged to Corey Jones. Correct. Right. Okay, now, when you collected that gun, did you also take swabs of that gun as well? I took multiple sets of swabs from the gun. Okay, and can you just tell the, the, the members of the jury briefly, what are swabs? But what do you do when you, when you take swabs from, from an item, an object? Each, each item swabbed um, in, in, when it's a dry item in the case of like a gun. Um, I open a package, they're, they're hermetically sealed inside of a package, two sterile swabs. I open them out, I apply distilled water and literally just rub the area to be swabbed um, with the idea that any, any skin cells or any other biological matter might, be, um, might adhere to the cotton swabs and provide DNA. Okay, and once you do that, now you're not, once that's done, you then seal that swab in a container. Correct. I, I seal it in, a, in an evidence bag and give it to the evidence unit. Okay. And then it's up to the detective to determine whether or not we're going to test those swabs for DNA. Exactly. And, and then when it is decided that they'll be tested, that's the forensic biology unit. Okay. So I want to uh, show you what is going to be States 20. You recognize that package there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what is that? This is a package containing swabs from the pistol that had been marked with stanchion seven, mm -hmm. as well as the ammunition from within. Okay, and um, now the packaging, is it in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you, when you swabbed, swabbed the, uh, the, the gun and then packaged the swabs? It is, my, my original seal is in place and intact. Um, it's been opened and resealed which is which is typical. Okay. But it's in, it's in pretty much the same condition as it was in. Correct. But this time I want to offer him the evidence state 20. Any objection? Okay. State 20 is admitted. You also took um, some other, you did some other work as it relates to that, to the gun, right? Yes, ma'am. And... I'm going to show you now what is going to be states 21, states 22, and states 23, and states 24. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you what is going to be states 21 through 24. I do. These are, um, this is the, the outer packaging that I used to submit a pair of swabs from the slide of the pistol that was at the base of the sign. Okay. And so more swabs. More swabs. These were from an area that appeared to um, possibly be a blood-like substance. Um, there wasn't enough material for me to do a presumptive test um, that does consume some of the sample. So when it's a very small amount, I merely swab it and submit it. Okay. And is it in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged it? It is. My, my seal is there intact and the, it's been resealed after it was opened. Okay. I'm going to judge at this time, state will offer into evidence states 21. Any objection? No. Admitted. Have you take a look at states 22? Do you recognize that package? I do. Okay, and what is that? This is a package of, of um, ballistic fragments provided by the medical examiner's office. Okay, and did you, did, you, did you collect those from the medical examiner's office? I did not personally. Mm -hmm. um, th the way that works is we will have an evidence technician. I work at night. We'll have an evidence technician go during the daytime and collect evidence for us. And so what do you do with it? How did you get, how did you, how did, how, how did you put it in this, how did it come to be placed in this packaging bag? In the case of the projectiles from the medical examiner's office, 
they're already sealed inside of a smaller envelope. I don't break their seal. I put them inside of a of a PBSO property bag mm -hmm. and fill it out as I would for any other any other piece of evidence and apply the same seal. Okay. And did you do that in this case? I did. And does this packaging that you would have placed that envelope in, so it was, was inside this bag is another envelope that would have come from the medical examiner's office? Likely two envelopes, okay. yes. And this packaging that we're looking at right now, is it, is it in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged it? It is. Okay. Judge, I'll stay with offering the evidence states 22. Any objection? Admitted. Twenty-two. Yes, I do. Okay, and what is that? This is this is the pack, the outer packaging that I used again to place a sealed envelope, which I did not open, mm -hmm. that I received from the medical examiner's office that was labeled projectile from left arm. And is it in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged this brown packaging here? It is. It is in the same same as before with the seals. My seal is present and intact, and since then it's been opened and resealed okay. properly. Judge, at this time, state we're offering to evidence states twenty three. Any objection? Twenty three is admitted. And now I'd like to take a look at states twenty four. And do you recognize that? I do. This is the outer packaging mm -hmm. from a latent fingerprint that I had lifted from the right side of the frame of the pistol prior to swabbing for DNA. Okay. And it, does it appear to be in the same or substantially the same packaging as it was in when you initially uh, sealed it? Yes, it is with the, the same seals as described earlier where it was opened and resealed. And when you say latent print card, what, what is that? That's where I, I've, in this case, I used um, black powder and a fiberglass brush, dusted the gun, the, the dust particles adhere to the residue left from, from the ridge, from fingers, finger ridges, and form the pattern. I, I place a piece of adhesive tape over it, lift it off of, in this case, the pistol, and then I apply it to a glossy surfaced white card and so the front of the card has it's a form you fill out information where the print came from when you collected it and i submit that for um, examination comparison by somebody in the forensic id unit okay and that's what you did in this case that's what i did okay. just this time state we're offering to evidence uh states 24. any objection absolutely Admitted. Okay. So now, back at the crime scene, uh, CSI Thomas. I want to go through some more photographs, okay? And what I'm going to show you is going to be states composite 25A through D. I do. I do. I do. I do. Now, do these photos fairly and accurately depict uh, the scene as you saw it back on October 18th of 2015 when you were taking these photographs? They do. Um, one photograph includes an addition that I added being um, a scale for reference. Judge, this time, state we're offering to evidence states composite 25A through D. Any objection? Admitted. 25A through D is in dog. Permission to publish, Judge? You may.
Okay. So can you tell us what we're looking at in 25A here? That would be a, a photograph off the west side of the off-ramp with the camera directed generally south towards PGA Boulevard. In the now, right here, can you see the little red dot again? I see it. Okay. This is Corey Jones's body? He's beneath there, yes, ma'am. Okay. And this little red dot right here? Yes, ma'am. And is that, what is that there? That little, right it, right. it appears to be the street sign where the number, stanchion number seven, the pistol was located. Okay. Now, did you take any measurements from that sign to where Cora Jones's body was located? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And can you please give us the measurements from that sign to where uh, his body was located? The distance yes. from Mr. Jones' head to the pistol measured to be approximately 124 feet and 5 inches. 124 feet, 5 inches? Yes, ma'am. And that would have been from where the pistol, as you're referring to, to his head? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, did you take any measurements from the rear of his vehicle, meaning one of the back tires of his vehicle, to where his body was located? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And can you tell us what, uh, well, first of all, what, did you measure both tires to where his body was located or just one of the tires, the right tire? All four tires. All four tires, okay. So can you give us uh, those measurements? Yes. With all four tires? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, beginning with the left front tire of Mr. Jones' vehicle, mm -hmm. and all of these are going to be in reference to the location of his head. Okay. The left front tire to the head was 205 feet, 4 inches. The right front tire was 305 feet and 5 inches. The left rear tire was 196 feet, 10 inches. The right rear tire was 195 feet and one inch. I'm gonna show you what is now uh, 25B. Now this is 25B. We're still in this photograph looking at uh, Corey's body underneath this yellow uh, tarp here, right? Correct, with the camera directed approximately north, okay. still on the, on the west side of the ramp. Now, this palm tree right here, uh, CSI Thomas? Yes, ma'am. Did you make note of some sort of a defect in this particular palm tree right here? I, I noted a, a small um, penetrating defect toward the base of the tree that appeared fresh. Okay. And did you take a measurement from, let's say, uh, this palm tree to where Corey's body was located? Corey Jones's body was located? Yes, ma'am. Can you give us that measurement, please? From the defect in the tree to Mr. Jones' head was approximately 15 feet and 4 inches. What about, did you take it from his, what about his feet? The defect from the tree to his feet. Did you take that measurement? I did. What is that? To the left foot, it would be 19 feet and 11 inches. Mm -hmm. And to the right foot, it would be 20 feet and 6 inches. Thank you. I'm going to show you what is 25C. And 25C is... What is this that we're looking at here? That's the um, south-facing portion of the, the bottom of the tree trunk of that palm tree. Okay. So that's that same palm tree that you just gave us the measurements for? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to show you 25D. Is this a closer-up picture? 
of that defect? It's a closer view and with the scale that added for size reference. And this tree here just sat in that tree like fresh sap. There, there was some type of moisture. I'm not aware of exactly what it was. Okay. But it, 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 the, the defect appeared to be fresh. It did. Now, after you... Just now, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm going to go back... Go back to... I'm going to go to the... The vehicle, stay on the, uh, go back to the vehicle for a minute. You, we talked about some of the, um, not the vehicle. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> when you were out there, uh, CSI Thomas, did you take, we saw, it, we saw photographs of his vehicle. Did you take um, any sort of uh, swabs or any sort of prints, lift any prints from Corey, Corey Jones's vehicle? I did not process the vehicle on the scene. You didn't process the vehicle on the scene? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Did you take any? Well, I'm going to show you what is going to be. Let me, let me show you these and see if you recognize these. Hold on a second. Right, the, the vehicle was processed in the garage at headquarters, yes. and that would be um, the location the vehicle was at the time the prints were lifted. Okay. You did that, though? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, not at the scene, but when the vehicle was transported to the garage, you then took latent prints, or you, 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 you processed for latent prints? I did. The garage. Okay. So, we're going to make these number 26. And number 27 and and looking at these let's start with 26 what is 20 what is inside 26 there this would be um three cards lifted from the suv okay and that would have been at the time that the car after the car has been towed to the garage correct okay and does this bag appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged it? It is with the same description with the seals. My seal is there and intact. Okay. And does this time state officer's evidence uh, states 26? Yes, you may. Yes. Yes. From which locations, sir? You said that there are three latents from the SUV from which locations? They're, they're not listed on the bag. They're, they're filled out on the individual forms, and the examiners um, note that in their, in their examination. No okay, 26, I believe, is what you're referring to. That's admitted. All right. And then what is one from the state's 27? Let's take a look at that. Do you recognize that packaging? Yes, I do. Okay, and what is that? This would be um, the packaging for 16 latent print cards from the vehicle in the garage. Okay. And did you package these latent print cards? I did. Okay, and is the packaging still in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged it? It is. Okay. Judge, at this time, state officer's evidence states 27. Okay. Admitted. Okay, so now what I want to do, uh, CSI Thomas, is I want to talk to you about... Um, we saw some photographs of Corey Jones's clothing. When you looked at the video, you saw him out there, obviously in the area where he was located, and um, the clothing that he was wearing. Now, were those clothing that he was wearing, were they, 
were the clothes the, the clothes that he had on that day were they collected they were they were transported along with mr jones to the medical examiner's office okay. and did you take photographs of the clothing even though they were taken from the medical examiner's office at some point did you take photographs of the clothing i did okay so i'm gonna show you what is going to be states 28 a through d I do. Okay, what is that for? This would be the pants with the um, belt. Okay, and do you recognize that? I do. This would be the the T-shirt with the Future Prez logo. Okay, and do you recognize these? Yes, I do. That would be the boxers. Okay. And do you recognize these? I do. Those would be the footwear. Okay. Do they fairly and accurately depict the clothing that you saw? Uh, Corey Jones wearing when you saw his body located um, back on PG-95 before he was uh, taken to the medical examiner's office? Yes, they do. Judge, at this time, state will offer into evidence 6, composite 28, A through D. Any objection? Where? Admitted. Motion to publish, Judge? You may. These are the pants. Yes, ma'am. Shirt. Yes, ma'am. That's the shirt that says future presidents? Yes, ma'am. And these are the boxers? They are. C. Yes, ma'am. These were the shoes that he was wearing, 28D? Yes. So now you collected those, you, you collected them, and then you actually, you, you, you photographed them. So that's the photograph. Correct. As far as the actual collection, I wasn't present at the post-mortem examination. Um, the technicians at the medical examiner's office collect them, package them, and then send them to me. I'm going to show you what is going to be state 29. I'm going to show you what is state 29. And can you look at this bag and tell me if you recognize it? I do. Okay, and what is, what is it? This would be the original bag that I packaged, the, the PBSO bag that I packaged Mr. Jones' pants and belt in. Okay, all right. And is it, does it appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in your initial package? It is. My, my seal is present and intact. And there's another seal from where it had been opened at one point and resealed. Judge, this time state offers the evidence states 29. Any objection? Admitted. So this right here that we're looking at, uh, CSI Thomas, is what was states 28 for the pants. Is that correct? The what same. Right the same. The same. Same thing? Same thing. Recognize that bag? I do. Okay, and what's in that bag? The t shirt. And does the bag appear to be pretty much the same? Substantially the same condition it was in, as it was in when you packaged it. Cor it. Correct. My seals are present and intact, and um, there are other seals from, from another examiner, examiner that had opened it and resealed it. Okay. The state would offer into evidence states 30. Okay. Admitted. And in this bag here is this item we just saw right here. Right. The same. Okay. 
going to show you what it's going to be. Stage 31. I do. Okay. And what's in that though? This would be the gray shorts. Okay. And does it appear in the same or substantially the same condition as the when we initially packaged it? Yes, with the same same condition with the seals. Because this time state we're offering to evidence states thirty one. Any objection? Thirty one. No objection admitted. And those were the Those are the boxers. Correct. I'm going to show you what is states 32. I do. This would be the bag diet that I packaged the footwear in. Okay. And for Jones's footwear? Yes, ma'am. Does it appear to be in the same condition or substantially the same condition as the same condition you packaged it? I don't see my seal on it. Um, it does happen sometimes that bags deteriorate and the, the original bag can be placed inside of another one. Okay. Um, that that might be the case here. I. I I could only speculate, but my seal is not present on the on the outside of this bag. Okay. But did you collect his tennis shoes? I did. Well, I, I received them from the medical examiner's office. Okay. And you placed them in a bag? Yes, ma'am. Judge, this time, state would offer the evidence states 32. Any objection? Admitted. And this bag contains, these are the shoes we're talking about right here, right? The same. some of the other uh, photographs that you took while you were on scene, okay? And what I, the photographs I want to discuss with you at this time are photographs of Corey Jones's vehicle. I'm gonna show you what is going to be 33, thank you. A through Q. Yes, I do. 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 And for Madam Court Reporter's sake, why don't we do this? Put those aside that are in your hand, sir. Then hand them the entire thing. I want you to go through it, and then I want you to tell me if you don't recognize one of them. It's no problem. I just see her typing. I recognize the photos. Okay. Now, the photographs, so they fairly and accurately depict uh, photographs of Corey Jones's vehicle and items that were found inside of his vehicle. Uh, the vehicle. Correct. Uh, th those photos are taken over, over a span of time. Some are taken from the scene. Some are taken from an off-site storage facility. Um, but they're all photographs of the vehicle and items within. Thirty-three A through Q. Any objection? In A through Q. Thirty-three A through Q. You mentioned the publish, Judge. Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Let's start. Okay. This here. This photo here. What are we looking at in this photo here? That would be the 
the driver floorboard area okay. with a cell phone. And this is the cell phone right here? Yes, ma'am. A closer view of the same. Now, did you turn that cell phone over? I did not. So was it when, when, it, when this photograph was taken, the photographs that we have just seen of the two photos uh, with the cell phone facing up, um, that's the position that the cell phone was in uh, when the photographs were taken? Correct. the center console and left seat area of the same vehicle. Okay. Now, this is the glove box. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. And did you look inside this glove box? I did. Okay. And did you, what did you find in there? There was a box from a Jimenez Arms uh, pistol and a bill of sale for the same. The same. And now this photograph here of that same box obviously is taken out of the car already. And is that a photograph of the uh, Jimenez Arms 380 box taken back at headquarters? That is correct. Now, there are several things on this photograph here. And is this brown paper indication that this is also these items were taken, that this photograph was taken back at headquarters? Yes, it is. Okay. And so this box here, is this the same Jimenez Arms box? It is. And this here, what is this right here? That would be the bill of sale. Okay. And this right here? That would be the pistol magazine containing live ammunition. And this right here? It would be a trigger lock. And what's that right here? An information pamphlet about gun safety. Now, these four items, were they found in the Jimenez Arms box, inside the box? They were found in the glove box with the, with the pistol box. Okay. So they weren't necessarily inside the box, but they were found in the same glove compartment. Correct. And G, this is a close-up of that. This is that bill of sale that we just saw? Correct. Close-up of it? Okay. And H, what are we looking at on the floorboard there? Right it, here. This is the, the front passenger floorboard. Um, on the floor itself, we can see the, the owner's manual for the pistol. And we can see the open glove box. And this one, and a close up of that. Same, a closer view of the owner's manual on the. Photograph of the phone that you uh, collected and then took back to headquarters and took a photograph of it at headquarters? Correct. Now, let's go to the rear of uh, Corey Jones's vehicle. And what are we looking at here? Musical instruments, primarily, um, as well as you know, packaging and connecting cables. Um, for the most part, the vast majority of the bulk of that was was m musical instruments. Okay. And this photograph here? Again, that's through the open rear hatch. We can see the drum set. Okay, so these are his drum sets. His, not sets, but his drum set. Yes, ma'am. And is this a different... Um, Basically, more drums from his drum set. Correct. And here? An electronic drum type instrument. And that photograph there? 
a similar instrument with its with its carrying package. And is that the, what that is? What we just saw? And I'm I'm not a musician, but I recognize that as being mus musical instru instrumentation. Okay. And was this car here located in this in this car as well? Yes, it was. Now the uh, this is. The box that you collected that the gun um, would have been contained in, the Jimenez arms, did you actually, we see photographs of it, but you actually, you, you collected it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to show you what is going to be uh, States 34 and what is States 35. <clears throat> Let's start with, start with states 34. Do you recognize that? This would be the, the uh, Jimenez arms box from the glove compartment, mm -hmm. along with the trigger lock, two keys, that informational pamphlet, and the bill of sale. Okay. And is it the same, also suggesting the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged it? It is. Just this time, state will offer into evidence states 34. Any objection? Admitted. I do. This would be the this would be the outer packaging for the owner's manual located on the passenger side floor beneath the glove box. Okay. And is the packaging the same or substantially the same as it was when you initially packaged it? It is. Judge State would offer into evidence. Uh, 635. No Admitted. Okay, now in addition to taking latent prints of uh, Corey Jones's vehicle, CSI Thomas, did you also uh, collect DNA swabs? I did. You did? Okay. So I'm going to show you what is going to be. Yeah, I'm just trying to, let me put these in an order that I, that I want here. I want that. It's going to be States 36. 36, 37, 38, 39. I'm going to show you what is going to be states 36 through 40. So I'm going to show you what is going to be states 36 through 40. And can you take a look at these packages and let's start with 36. Do you recognize what that is? I do. This is the bag of swabs from several areas of the vehicle. Okay, and when you say, because there are two vehicles involved. So now, are these swabs from Corey Jones's vehicles? Correct. Okay. These are these are from the, the the SUV, the gray SUV. Okay. And is the packaging the same as it was, or substantially the same as it was when you initially packaged it? It is. Okay. At this time, state law offers evidence states 36. Any objection? Admitted. Take a look at states 37. More swabs from the same vehicle um, in the packaging that I originally placed it in. Um, my original seal is in, intact, and this one also appears to have been open and resealed. Okay. And is it in the same or substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially It is. Judge State will offer the evidence states 37. Okay. Admitted. States 38, please. More swabs from the same vehicle in in my original packaging. 
in in similar condition to the way I submitted it with my seal in place and uh, another seal where it had been subsequently opened and resealed. Is that in the same condition that it was in when you initially Yes. So state what offering evidence states 38. Admitted. More swabs from from the same vehicle. Um, this is the original packaging in substantially the same condition. My seal's intact. It's been opened and resealed afterwards. Okay. So this time state what offering evidence states 39. Okay. Admitted. This would be more DNA swabs from the same vehicle, again with my original packaging, my original seal, and then additional seals. And substantially the same condition as it was in the initial package? Yes. State law and state judge. Admitted. So now the box that we just showed the members of the jury, the, the, the box that was that was that you collected from uh, Corey Jones's vehicle, that him in his arms box. Correct. Did you take swabs from that box as well? If I may have a moment to. Sure. You want to take a look at the bag? Yes, ma'am. Correct. This, this would be my original packaging um, for swabs from the pistol box, from the manual, the exterior cover of the manual, that is. Um, swabs from the magazine and the six live rounds of ammunition that were in the pistol. And swabs from an oil bottle that was inside of the SUV. It is. Judge, this time, state what offerings of evidence states 41. Okay. Admitted. Okay, now I'd like to take a, take a look at some more photos. And this is going to be states composite 42. A through A through G is in girl. Okay. Mr. Richardson, you need to see him again before I show him things. Judge Mark said a few minutes ago, I recognize the items photographed. Yeah. Um, these are not all photographs that I took. I, I took some of these. Okay. But do they're... You do you recognize the photos, though? I do recognize all the items in the photos. And even though you didn't take some of them, do they fairly and accurately represent the items that are depicted in the photo? They do. At this time, State Law Offering to Evidence states 42A through G. Admitted. And so the jurors, you may be sitting there, why do they ask those questions? Because they're required to by law. They seem like strange questions. So the two questions are asked almost every time. Do you recognize them? Does it fairly and accurately depict what you saw at that time. Sometimes there's differences. Somebody says, oh, I know, things have changed. But just so you know, she's not just doing it for the fun of it. She's required. And I appreciate the defense making this go faster. Thank you to both sides. Judge, may I publish them now? You may. OK, so tell us what we're looking at here in 42A 
42A. That would be the unmarked gardens PD vehicle. The same vehicle later in the morning from a slightly different angle. That would be um, police issued equipment located within the the white unmarked van. What is that? Do you know what that is, uh, CSI Thomas? It's a, a load-bearing vest. Um, it appears to have a, at least a part of a radio attached to it. Okay. A, a carabiner. Nothing. Well, it, oh, it has a uh, name attached for Officer Raja. That is inside the inside that White Gardens PD van. And this photograph here. That is um, riot gear that was contained in the rear of the Gardens van. And I'm going to make these actually 42, not A through G, but A through E. 42, it, no need, 42 A through E's in Edward. It makes sense to put those other two right now. Damien, you okay? All right. Okay. You photographed the van. Did you also collect um, weapons from the defendant, firearms? I collected Officer Raja's pistol from the trunk of a marked um, Gardens PD uh, vehicle that was on the scene. Uh -huh. And um, I believe it was Investigator Patrick that collected material from within the white van. Okay, so how many firearms did you collect from uh, the defendant? One. One? Okay. Let me take a look at two and three, please. what is marked as states two and ask you if you recognize it. This this appears to be the, the pistol that I collected from in the trunk of the gardens marked unit. And did you package it this way? That is the original box. That's not the way I packaged it. Um, it's been removed and reattached in a different orientation. There's, there are guidelines we follow. For example, the muzzle needs to point to the right as you look down in the top. The, it's in the wrong direction. And the safety device that's there now um, was not in place when I submitted it. Okay. All right. But the packaging, everything that was attached that actually came with the gun, like the magazine, um, that's in here and uh, the bullets. All of that stuff has been packaged together. Correct. Okay. So at this time, State Walker's evidence. I'm oh, sorry. It's already, I think it's already been put into evidence, marked. hasn't it? It's or just marked. marked? Any objection? You absolutely. He wants to take a peek at it, please. It was marked, Judge. We didn't put it in yet. No problem. It's about to be. 
Yes. Admitted. That's number two. I'm going to show you what is states 43. I do. Okay. Now, is that a picture of the same thing that you just saw in the box that you just admitted into evidence in States 2? Correct. It, it's a picture that's taken with better clarity because it was back at headquarters or had better control of lighting and so forth. Okay. Stay with the evidence States 43. 43. Any objection? Mm -hmm. Admitted. Can you publish real quick, Judge? Yes. So that's what, when I showed you that box, minutes ago? Yes, ma'am. That's what's in that box. Correct. Well, that's what I placed in the box. Yes. Okay. So now let's move on to I'm going to show you what is going to be states 44 composite A through M as in Mary. my question that that's the only thing in there that I, I don't know what it is um, these aren't all my pictures okay. um, some were taken um, later on by another investigator okay. um, but they appear to be the items that are photographed in my pictures okay. do you recognize them yes I do okay. and were you on the scene on October 18th of 2015 yes I was okay and um, did you see the defendant there I did and did you see the way that he was dressed I did and do these photographs fairly and accurately depict the way he looked, uh, he, he appeared, the clothing that he was wearing, back on October 18, 2015? They do. This time, the state will offer into evidence states 43, 44A through L. 44A through L's and Larry. Admitted. Permission to publish, Judge? Yes. Okay. So is this is a photograph of the defendant back on October 18, 2015? Yes, ma'am. That's as he was attired that morning. Okay. And that's the front of him? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Photograph of the side of him there? Correct. Photograph of the back of him there? Correct. Now these photographs here, this is baseball cap. It appears to be the same cap. That's not a photograph that I took. The back of it? Same. It appears to be the cap from that morning, but again, I did not photograph that. I, I have no idea whether what, what type of socks he was wearing. Um, that you saw him that day, though, when he was out there. I saw him that day. Shoes? Those appear to be the shoes that he was wearing. Pants? The same. And that's the front view of the pants. And this is back view of the pants, or rear of the pants? Yes, ma'am. Again, these, these are photographs that I did not take. Okay. But do they, you said that 
you recognize they they appear to me to be the same as um, was worn on the morning of the incident. Shirt. Same. That appears to be the front of the shirt. It does. Back of the shirt. Yes, it does. And same shirt turned inside, basically turned. Uh, I. Right way, basically. It was inside out. Now it's. I never observed the shirt right side out. It it appears to me to be similar um, in color. The the tag looks similar, um, but I never saw the shirt other than when it was inside out. Okay, I'm gonna show you what it's going to be. States 45 and states 46. First of all, let me show you States 45. This would be the the holster with magazine and live ammunition collected at the scene on the day of the incident. Okay, and did you Yes, ma'am. This is this is my packaging, my original seal intact, and and as with other evidence, it's it's been opened and resealed. Okay. Otherwise, substantially the same. Okay. So this time, state will offer the evidence. States forty-five. Any objection? No, sir. Admitted. I want to show you a photograph, which is going to be states forty-six. I ask, do you recognize this photograph? I do. Okay. And um, what is this photograph? That is the holster and the magazine with the live ammunition removed. Okay. Which is what is in state 45. Correct. So it's a fairly, fairly and accurate depict what's in state 45 in this bag? It depicts what I placed in the bag, yes. Any objection? Admitted. So what we see up here is what we have in this bag here. Correct. The nylon holster, the the Glock magazine, and the nine rounds of live ammunition. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you what's going to be states 47, states 48, and what is going to be states 49. What is marked as states 47, 48, and 49? This would be swabs from the from the pistol and associated holster and ammunition. Now, when you say pistol, are we, are we talking about a different pistol now? We're not, are, we, are, are we talking about Corey Jones' gun or are we talking about uh, we, gun? We're talking about the, the pistol that I collected from the, from the trunk of the Gardens PD vehicle, not the, not the chrome Jimenez arms gun. Okay. This so is from the Glock. Correct. And you packaged these swabs. I did. Substantially the same condition as they were in when you initially packaged them? Yes. Judge, at this time, State Warrant into evidence states 47. Admitted. Okay, then we get states 48 for me. This, this is the outer packaging um, that I used of the oral DNA standards collected at the scene. Uh, Officer Raja submitted an oral DNA sample in the form of uh, buccal swabs from the mouth at the scene. Mm -hmm. And this would be the package that, that I packaged them in and submitted them to the evidence unit. Okay, so it's his DNA standard. Correct. Okay. So 
substantially the same condition as it was in when you initially packaged it? The exterior looks the same. Um, it, it doesn't feel like it has a pair of swabs in there. I know it's it's been opened and resealed in right with DNA. I, I can feel there's there's something in there. Okay. Yes. Okay. So at this time, state would offer into evidence states of uh, 48, Judge. Admitted. I'm going to show you what is going to be states 49 and 50. I'm going to show you now what is states 49 and 50. Can you take a look at 49 for me? This would be the outer packaging that I used to submit the inked um, fingerprints and palm prints collected by the medical examiner's office. Okay. And you placed in this package? I did. Substantially the same packaging as it was in when you initially packaged it? Yes, ma'am. Judge, at this time, state will offer into evidence states 49. Any objection? Mark. Admitted. Take a look at states 50 for me. This is, um, this contains a sealed envelope, which I did not open. Um, from the medical examiner's office as a as a DNA sample of Mr. Jones. Okay. Substantially the same packaging as it was in when you initially collected it? Correct. Judge, at this time, state will offer into evidence states 50. Any objection? No objection. Admitted. I'm going to show you what is going to be states 51. Yes, ma'am. I do. These are um, these are discs containing the data collected by the Leica Scan Station C10 um, surveying instrument. And when you say Leica Scan Station, what, what, what is it? what is Leica? Leica is a manufacturer of of high end optical equipment such as microscopes, cameras and survey equipment. In this particular case, the scan station C10 um, is what's referred to as a high definition laser scanner. The, it, it uses a laser to measure distance by the, the amount of time it takes a light pulse to go out, reflect, and return. And as it sweeps around left to right and also up and down, each, each pulse of light that comes back is is recorded um, how long it took, so you know the distance and exactly what direction the laser was pointed. And these millions and millions of points collectively are known as the point cloud, and they basically make a make a map of everything the scanner can see. Okay, and we well, we talked about. Um, uh, a lot of measurements earlier. I asked you several questions um, in a lot of the photographs regarding measurements from the left and right rear tire of Corey Jones's vehicle to where his body was found, to where his gun was found. Um, so all the measurements that you gave us, were those the result of you using this Leica equipment, those measurements? They were. I imported those into uh, software on a PC where I was able to directly examine the, the point cloud. And I picked points. Each, each item um, that was scanned, there will be many, many points on that item. I picked one approximately centrally located for each item, um, put a marker on it, a labeled marker. And then after I had labeled everything, um, that I was going to measure, then I collected measurements from every point to every other point that had been marked. Okay. So all the measurements that you gave us today, and including um, all the measurements you gave us today, are contained on these discs that are in here. So many discs. The the measurements are on there. That's the raw data. So it will contain millions and possibly billions of individual measurements. At this time, the state will offer evidence states fifty one. Admitted. Now, one more 
set of Sister Thomas, once you uh, did what you, um, focusing on October 18th of 2015, after you did uh, everything that you needed to do out there as lead crime scene investigator, collecting evidence, then taking it back, storing it in a facility, and then photographing it later, did there come a point in time where you would have gone back out to the to the scene where this happened there there were occasions a few occasions where i did return back out to the scene okay and did you go back to the scene at one point to conduct a light reflectivity test yes i did um because the gun was a was a shiny chrome material on the exterior um and officer raja uh, to him, it appeared to be a, a flickering laser. And we had the idea that maybe at that time of day with the traffic signal, which would have been possibly behind Officer Raja, um, that the, the chrome of the gun may have been reflecting that red light back at him and made it appear that there was a light source on the gun itself. Myself, Sergeant Chris Karpinski from Violent Crimes Homicide Unit, and Investigator Tom Wells from the State Attorney's Office. And when you guys uh, went out there, what, what time of day was it? It was approximately the same time as the incident. Okay. Um, if, if I may refer to my notes. Sure. You know. It would be a... We, we arrived on the scene mm -hmm. the night that we actually did conduct, conduct that experiment mm -hmm. was the night of October 20th, 2015. We arrived at approximately 3 a.m. and cleared by approximately 3.30 a.m. Okay. And so when you, when you went out there, The, the, the plan was to see if you could, you took Corey Jones's gun with you. Correct. And you went out there with the goal of seeing whether or not you could get a reflection from the red light that would have been facing Corey Jones's vehicle. Is that right? Exactly. So that we could see if that, that shiny chrome could be reflecting the, the traffic signal. Okay. I'm going to show you what is going to be state's composite 52 A and B. I recognize them. And do they fairly and accurately depict uh, the test that was done when you guys went out there? They, they do. Well, well, let, me, let me rephrase. Do they fairly and accurately depict the, the, the lighting that is shown on the gun, on Corey Jones's gun, that you took out there back on October 20th, 2015? For the most part, they do. The, the, the coloring is a little bit different from the way I perceived it. Our eyes don't work exactly the same as a camera, and we don't view contrast in the same way as a camera. But um, those appear; those are photos of of that of the pistol while we were conducting the experiment. So this time, State Walking's evidence states composite 52A and B. Any objection? No objection. Admitted. But now you were out there, you, so you, you, you saw what it looked like. You were out there. Correct. Right? So you yes, saw what it looked like. Yes, ma'am.
So now is this uh, Mr. Wills standing there with, with the gun? Correct. And it's pointed in the direction that would have been facing uh, north. Uh, he's facing approximately south. The camera's facing approximately north. I'm sorry, south. I, I, I'm sorry, I got mixed up. Um, he's facing the direction where the light is. Correct. I was. He's facing me. Mm -hmm. I'm facing him with the camera, and over my shoulder behind me is the traffic signal. Right. And this one. Same thing. Same thing. Closer up. And that's where we were able to get it to, to actually capture that, that red light that appeared to clearly um, be reflecting off of the traffic signal, reflecting off of that chrome. Okay. Now, do you know where Mr. Wills was standing when, when this picture was taken? Do you know where he was where was he standing in relation to where Corey Jones's vehicle would have been? We we returned to the scene and we went back to the approximate area where the vehicle was, and um, we took multiple photographs and even video clip from the gun from from Investigator Will standing a few feet to the left, a few feet to the right, a little closer, a little further, to try to see if we could get that red reflection. So you, you, you had him stand in, in many different positions. Correct. To try and get that red reflection. Correct. Okay. Now, you said earlier uh, when we first started talking about this that you have some, uh, that you are familiar with guns. Yes, ma'am. I have training from ATF, FBI, PBSO. Okay. And have you ever heard of a laser max laser? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, looking at this photo and the other one, um, have you, before I get to that, let me ask you this. Have you seen a laser max laser on a gun? Yes. And have you seen what it looks like on a gun? Yes. And have you seen it flickering as the defendant said it was? Yes. Okay. Now, when you uh, did this experiment, did this, out of both of these photos that we see here, did either one of these photos demonstrate to you or illustrate or did they appear to be similar to a laser max laser yes you guys okay fantastic and you did just what i told you to do stand up do whatever you need to do and we will break when um we get to before we go to cross so that's when that'll be a good time to break so uh Ms. Ellis, go ahead. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. So now, looking at, uh, based on the experiment that you did, and uh, you indicated to us that you are familiar with a laser max laser, uh, did that appear to be a laser max laser to you? It did not appear to be. Um, that, that gun has an enclosed guide rod anyway. That, that gun wouldn't be compatible with a laser max laser. Um, we, we tried to get the red reflectivity and the flicker pattern. Um, we got the red, we, we tried from several different angles and, and we, couldn't get, we couldn't get the same flicker pattern or any flicker pattern. And a laser but, laser constantly flickers. It flickers. And you never got that? I was not able to recreate that effect. Okay. Judge, if I can just have a moment. Sure you can. set of photos to show you and then I'm done with you uh, Mr. Thomas I'm going to show you what's going to be
these states comprised at 54, 53, A through D. I did. I, I made a, a three-dimensional drawing, um, not to scale, of of the scene, mm -hmm. based on photographs, memory, and the um, the scan station C10 data. And when you say not to scale, what does that mean? That means um, not not to scale. In other words, something something that may be a, a foot tall at a given range. Might look a different size than other similar objects, even though it's the same size okay. at a similar range. Okay. It's just not exactly the scale. These stanchions, for example, um, would be so small you wouldn't be able to see them. Okay. All right. Now, can you take a look at the four diagrams you have there and tell me whether or not those are the diagrams that you These are. Okay. And even though they're not to scale specifically, do they fairly accurate, accurately represent um, the scene as you saw it back on October 18, 2015? They do. the The idea of the of those diagrams is is to aid somebody who had not seen the scene to tie together photographs, video clips, um, in other other sources of information about how the scene may have been laid out. It just kind of gives you a, a broad overall view so that um, you can kind of see how it was organized. Okay. Judge, this time state will offer into evidence states composite 53A through D. Any objection? With the understanding that they're not to scale, no objection. Great. Thank you. Admitted. Quickly publish, Judge. Yes. Okay. That's one of your diagrams, right? That is. the first, so I should have shown that one first, but that's pretty much the beginning of the scene, right? Correct. And then would have been that one, right? Correct. A, a different view in from further back. Okay. And then this one which shows it an angle further down with the defect in that palm tree we talked about earlier? Correct. And then this is just an overall view of everything? Correct. With Corey Jones' body, palm tree, stanchions, and everything? Correct. Thank you. Did I have anything for you? Okay. So uh, let's take the jurors back into the jury room. Turn your pad. Okay, we'll take 10 minutes, maybe a tad longer, depending on the jurors.